Okay, we said we model types, attributes, and value patterns, right? And here's the little diagram I gave you. We have a person, person has an ID, the person is the type, right? The ID is the attribute, and an ID has a particular pattern. In this case, it's a sequential number. Got the idea? Okay, that's where we've been. We said that they have a birthday and it's a date. We said that they have a sex, and sex can be either male or female. Okay, now, that's the stuff that we've been, we've been over before. Now let's look at how exactly the same stuff looks inside of a database. We have a person table, or in this case it's called the people table. The people table has certain, in this case they call them field names, but don't be, don't be, um, don't be thrown by the vocabulary. A field name is a column. A field name is a column in table terminology. It's an attribute in our other table terminology. Sorry that there's so many words to describe these same things, but that's just kind of how it is. There's lots of words all describing the same thing. So we have the table. It's the people table. We have a set of attributes, ID, first name, last name, address, sex, birthday. Notice it matches exactly with our model over here. And then we have data type. Data type is another way of saying value pattern. And if you look below, there's lots of information here. I've circled the male-female part. So notice somewhere down there in the below area, we're able to say that sex is either male or female. You don't get to have something, you don't get to have a third choice there. You have to choose either male or female. That's the way we set up the model. And now, so first thing to notice is that everything that's in our visual model over here is also in our database model on the other side of the screen. So all the stuff that you can do in our visual model, you can also do in our database model. Second thing to notice is that, gee, there's a whole lot more there. There's a bunch of stuff in there that, you know, I don't, I wouldn't know how to put in my visual model. And that's really the case. The database model is really, really, really specific and exact and gives you a whole lot finer control over, for example, a, an attribute pattern than we've ever, we've ever talked about in this class. And so it's a, it's a machine, it's a mechanical way of encoding all of these things that up until now we've just looked at visually. And that's really the idea of the modeling inside of a database is that it makes it really real and it makes it really precise and it makes it really exact. It's a well-honed model, it's a very well-honed model and you get some small indication about all the different nuances of it. If you look at the bottom of the, uh, the bottom of the picture here and you see all the different things that you can specify about that attribute that um, you may not have even known you would want to specify. And believe me, there's more, there's more than just this there. Okay, so our models specify types, attributes, and value patterns. Databases specify types, attributes, and value patterns. And the only difference is the vocabulary that they use. I chose the vocabulary of types, attributes, and value patterns because I wanted to be as generic as possible. In, um, in database terminology, we don't say types, attributes, and value patterns. We'll say tables for types, we'll say um, columns for attributes, and we'll say data types for value patterns. But, but in all other ways, it's really the same.